my name is Katherine Hardwick. I'm the director of Twilight. <laughs> Lords of Dogtown. We surf and we skate every day. 13. I'm taking it slow. And today we're going to break down a big action sequence from Twilight. <laughs> shooting we picked the most difficult set ever not one shot is easy love it welcome to twilight and my challenge was to keep it very emotional in the middle of all the action I was at the Sundance Film Festival and somebody said, hey, Catherine, we liked your movie 13. Would you like to direct a movie for our company, Summit? And they handed me like a stack of five scripts. And the next day I thought, what, what was that Twilight one? I wonder, maybe it's based on a book or something. So I looked at the book, read the book, and I felt like there was something there. I'm Edward Cullen. You're Bella. Um, yes. Twilight is a story of a young girl that moves to a different town, a small town in Forks, Washington, and falls in love with this kid that's like the hottest kid in the school, and turns out that he is a vampire. I've never wanted a human's blood so much in my life. And he also has to protect her from other vampires out in the world. For Twilight cast, the vampire flick catapulted them to instant superstar status. There is no action sequence in the book, and I wanted to accept the challenge of having this intimacy, yet give you something stimulating and cinematic. So at this point in the film, we are in the height of conflict. So the whole point was to create a beautiful action sequence that is emotional and tied to the characters. So this is where the preparation comes in handy. Now, my shot list was actually about five or six pages for this whole sequence, but I'm only showing you one page right now. And before I shoot any scenes for a film, I always go and do a shooting diagram for every scene. So let's take a look at the action sequence in the ballet studio from Twilight. I can't bring myself to regret the decisions that brought me face to face with death. They also brought me to Edward. You see Bella coming in. She thinks that her mother is there. <laughs> in this shot, you can see the bad vampire James reflected in three different mirrors in this shot. And there's really great things about working with mirrors. I mean, one, of course, it's our own self-reflection, you know, thinking about ourselves, contemplation. But it's also, you can create a much more dynamic visual scene. Maybe you can do something in one shot that would have normally taken five shots. That's my favorite part. You're a stubborn child, aren't you? Hmm? She's not even here. <laughs> this shot, it's kind of this epic intimacy idea where you have very close in the foreground, you see Bella, you see James right there in the foreground, but you also do see depth in the background and you see how she's trapped in this space. So you have it both in this cool frame. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but you really made it too easy. <laughs> Bella has gotten knocked into this column. Beautiful. 
we used the Dutch angles because it was about conveying a sense of unsettled nature where you are losing blood in a way, you're disoriented. The world is turning on its side. The camera is trying to reflect the feeling of the character. Beautiful. Very visually dynamic. I chose my stage well. It's cruel, really. Tell Edward how much it hurts. Tell him to avenge him. Tell him! Tell him! Rob is now trying to save Belle's life. So again, we're trying with the camera to be in close, to really feel his emotions and what he feels and what she feels by intimate moments. about the blood as we have close-up shots where gets him agitated but he's got to control himself enough to be able to save her we always try to think as a director how can the camera express what the character's feeling inside so Bella is feeling woozy dizzy losing blood losing consciousness and I chose to do it where the camera is kind of tilty and woozy. And I tried to say to the cameraman, you know, you are woozy, you are losing blood. It's like method camera work, you know. Bella, oh. God, it's okay. Oh, God. Your brothers will take care of him. I got him! Start the fire! Get the floorboard! That was a challenge for me. It's not really spelled out in the book. How do you kill a vampire in our universe? So we use the floorboards that we ripped up earlier as the prop to build the fire. Start the fire! Get the floorboard! So you're trying to build an organic action sequence, something that you had earlier on becomes a tool for the destruction of the bad vampire later on. I got him. Start the fire. Get the floorboard. I can try to suck the venom out. No, I won't be able to stop. But find the will to stop. Or choose. In this frame, we have an example of having layers of depth. So you have in the foreground, Dr. Cullen, Edward, trying to save Bella's life. And in the background, the other three vampire brothers and sister are trying to distinguish the life of the bad vampire. Composing it that way makes a richer story instead of having to have a cutting pattern where you're cutting from A, cutting to B. Stop. What choose? She only has minutes left. I'm gonna make you go away, bro. I'm gonna make you go away. In this case, there was something happening on the soundtrack. When we were in post, I just felt like it needs to go to one more level, like one more instrument. That one more instrument became Rob's voice. I don't think that you are aware that it's him singing it, but you are aware on some deep subliminal level, so it just adds another level of kind of like resonance to the scene. Edward, stop. Her blood is clean. You're killing her. Edward. Stop. Stop. Find the will.
and we transition through all her memories as she's dying, real time, past, present, future. Now I wanted to talk about these shots that are in here. I saw Rob and Kristen just lying on this grassy field. I said to the camera, just run over there and just shoot it, grab the steady cam, and just move around it. But it's not a scene. It might be later. <laughs> you never know. How often as a director are you going to have two actors dressed, ready, with a camera there? So maybe you do go steal it. And then later on in the editing room, with that magic of editing, I need something. I need something special for this transition. And you grabbed that moment and used it. Death is peaceful, easy. Life is harder. And then we find her back in the hospital room that she survived this. So again, you know, we're always just trying to think, how do we push the envelope? How do we create new images that we haven't seen and something that's compelling and emotional? And how can you make that active and visual and cinematic? Make sure that everything you're planning is connected to emotion and try to be as creative as you can. You know, analyze other action sequences learn about their angles, analyze how did they make that feel so dynamic, but what can I do a little bit different? What is another way to convey this that we haven't seen too many times on screen before? And then prepare for it, you know, doing your shot list, do your diagrams, you know, everything you can so that you're ready for that day when you have just a few minutes to shoot it. So that's how we shot the fight scene at the ballet studio in Twilight. I hope you guys found something useful, a little tool you can put in your toolbox for when you're working on an action sequence. And send us your comments, like what are your favorite action sequences that really blend emotion and action in them. See you guys, good luck, kick butt. <laughs>